Welcome to part one of the foundational concepts in semantic modeling tutorial. This part covers basic set theory. Naively, sets are just well-determined collections. I say naively because there are many subtleties to set theory and we're not going to get into all of them. But basic set theory is a pillar of semantic modeling and we will talk about it from, a, from that perspective. Examples of sets might be presidents of the United States, letters of the alphabet, failure modes of a gas turbine, and we will rather, again naively, refer to co such collections as classes. The basic set relationship is that of membership. The symbol for membership is the sort of a capital E with the corners rounded off. And in our controlled English, we will talk about set membership using is a, as in George Washington is a president of USA. So with that introduction, let's do a simple um, example to solidify this. I'd like you to create a model which contains the following declarations. That there is a class president of USA and that George Washington is a member of that class. We begin by creating a new project from the file menu. It's a general project. We'll give it a name tutorial as we'll use it for all of these exercises. Our next step is to create a new file and we'll name this basic set theory and it'll have a .sadl extension for saddle. We now use content assist control space to fill in a URI and an alias using the defaults. This establishes the basic requirements of a model and now we're able to create the class president of USA stating it is a class and then we can say that George Washington is a president of USA meaning that he is a member of the class and again we use content assist to help us fill in without having to worry about exact matching and typing. Now let's talk about the basic set operations. The first one is equivalence. Set A is equivalent to, and that's the symbol, um, three horizontal bars, kind of like an equal sign with an extra bar. Set A is the same as set B if they have exactly the same members. Subset. A is a subset of B if every member of A is also a member of B. The symbol for subset is a U on its side, capital U on its side with an underline. In terms of Venn diagrams, A is a subset of B if the figure representing A is entirely inside of the figure representing B. In our controlled English, we will refer to subclass using is a type of. And finally, proper subset. A is a proper subset of B if it's a subset, but it's not the same. So in our case here, A is a proper subset of B because it's not the same as B, that is, there are members of B which are outside of A. The next operation is union. The union of sets A and B is a set containing all members of A and all members of B. The symbol is a capital U. In terms of Venn diagrams, if we have sets A and B, then everything that is inside of A or inside of B is the union of A and B. Union is referred to by OR because X is a member of A union B if X is a member of A or X is a member of B. Intersection. The intersection of sets A and B is a set containing the elements that are in both A and B. The symbol is an upside down capital U in terms of Venn diagrams. The intersection is only not empty if the two um, figures overlap and the area of the overlap is the intersection of the two sets. Intersection is referred to by AND 
because x a member of a intersect b if x is a member of a and x is a member of b. Disjoint sets are sets which cannot have members in common. So in terms of Venn diagrams, if A and B do not overlap, do not touch, if you will, then they are disjoint. In terms of our controlled English, A and B are disjoint, or we can have a list of sets that are disjoint. So A, B are disjoint. Finally, complement within some universe U we can say that every A is everything not in B, then A is the complement of B. In terms of Venn diagrams, if we have some class U and we have some set B, then we could define A as the complement of B, meaning that everything in the universe U which is not in set B is in set A. Or in our controlled English, we can write A and B, given that A and B are types of U, so we have to define, first of all, that they are within this universe. They are subclasses of U. Then we can say that A is the same as not B. So let's do um, an exercise. Starting with your previous model, please do the following. Add military commander as a class modify the definition of George Washington to say that he belongs to the intersection of presidents of USA and military commander. Describe some additional members of the president of USA class, let's say Bill Clinton and Harry Truman. Then separately, if you will, define musician as being equivalent to the union of the classes singer and instrumentalists. Then define wind instrumentalist as a subclass of instrumentalists and say that singers and wind instrumentalists are disjoint as one might expect them to be at least at any point in time since it would be hard to sing and blow on a wind instrument at the same time. And finally within some universe um, let's say the class food Define vegetable as the complement of meat. In this exercise, we are going to begin <clears throat> by modifying our model to include a new class, military commander. So we declare the class just as we did president of USA. Now we are going to modify the definition of George Washington as an individual and state that he is a member of President of USA and Military Commander, meaning that he belongs to the intersection of those two classes. The next part of the exercise is to add some instances of the President of USA class. And we do this by um, stating a list of instances, Bill Clinton, Harry Truman, and stating that they are instances of President of USA. In the next part of the exercise, we're going to define the class musician to be the same as the union of the classes singer and instrumentalist. And remember that union is an or in set theory. So musician is the same as singer or instrumentalist, meaning that if a instance belongs to either one of those classes, it uh, um, belongs to the singer class. Notice that we're using quick fix in order to define those classes. Initially they were undefined, but if we put our cursor over them, we can define them by a quick fix. Next, we're going to define the wind instrumentalist class as a subclass of instrumentalist or as a type of instrumentalist. And having defined the wind instrumentalist class, we're going to state that singer and instrumentalist 
these two classes are disjoint, meaning that an instance cannot belong to both classes. The idea being that you can't sing and blow on a wind instrument at the same time. Final part of this exercise is to define food as a class. And within this class food, there are two subclasses, vegetable and meat. So vegetable and meat are types of food. And then finally, just to define vegetable as the complement of meat, that is vegetable is the same as not meat. Everything in the food class which is not a meat is vegetable. That completes our exercise. Just a few final points with respect to set theory. First of all, we've talked about sets and subsets and the logical conclusion of that is that sets can be partially ordered into hierarchies. So for example, you can say that dog is a subset or a subclass of mammal. Mammal is a subset or a subclass of animal. Animal is a subset or subclass of living thing. Living thing is a subset of physical thing and so on and so forth. So you can, you can create arbitrarily deep um, hierarchies of uh, class subclass relationships. Another interesting point is that uh, if you extend that hierarchy up, to the very top, you would expect to find at the top the set of all things. And in fact, in um, Al, there is just such a class, um, Al thing. Everything is a subset of this set. Likewise, if you go down to the bottom, um, there is, in some sense, a, um, a lowest set, and that is the empty set, which has no uh, elements at all. And the empty set is a subset of every set. So you can kind of imagine that you have a, a single point at the top, it spreads out uh, into a very large number of branches of the tree, and at the very bottom there is this empty set. There are lots of upper level ontologies that have been created that may or may not be useful to you, and here's a link to some of the um, ones that exist. That's the end of part one of this tutorial.